Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. He is a billion dollar businessman, but he is perhaps best known as a co-star on ABC's Shark Tank. Oh yes, he is. And now he's here to share the secrets to success. Please welcome the people shark, Damon Jones. Yay! Yes. Hey. Hey. Thank you. Hi, I'm going to give you a quick hug. How are you doing? Quick, quick, quick. All right. What's happening? What's going you. down? Purple pillow. Let me show you a pillow. All choice. right. It's my pillow? Thank yes. You. This is the special pillow for our guest. What's happening? The billionaire businessman. No, billion dollar, you know, companies, but I'm not a billionaire, you okay. know. Um, I like, but I, but I, I like the ring of that, though. Do you like how that sounds? Yeah, I, I, I've never been uh, introduced as a billion-dollar businessman, so now it's making me want to become a billionaire. I like so the, that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's actually the billion-dollar businessman. Yeah, yes, yeah, billion yeah. Billion-dollar businessman. Fubu, Fubu produced about six billion dollars in retail sales over the course of its history, so uh, so that's where you get the billion from. And you know, I made a. I made a little change off of that. Well, I tell it's you what's strange for a little change. I know that's real football. <laughs> I tell you what's a billion dollar business. Your new baby. My new baby. That's a billion my dollar business. My new baby Minka. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, um, this is my third child. I, I did I went down, you know, that route one time. I have a 25-year-old, a 19-year-old, and now I have a Aww. little girl. She's uh, two years old. Her name is Minka, and uh, she's the love of my life. Yeah. Just, like, just like my other daughters. How is that for you, to have such a huge stretch in age with your children? You know, it, it, it's really fascinating because the first, uh, you know, when I had my first daughter, it was how can I take care of these individuals mm -hmm. and how much can I go out there and work and make sure I provide for them. And then now yes. it's how much love can I give to her? Yes. Um, so it, it's, you really appreciate things at a, at a different stage in life. Yes. And, and, and how did you, so speaking of which, how did you get started? I guess, was that the motivation behind you becoming this mogul? No, you know, I, I was always an entrepreneur, you know, whether I was a kid at six years old trying to sell pencils, okay. and then I worked all the time, <laughs> and I, I, you know, well, and you I had all these concepts two. and <laughs> ideas. Right. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, um, but, you know, it really happened when uh, this emerging music that we call hip-hop today would be called, like, uh, social media, yeah. Instagram, right? Because I was getting all my information on what to wear, drink, drive through hip-hop at that Absolutely. time, right? And uh, I decided to make a clothing line for people who enjoyed and valued the culture, FUBU, for yes. us, by us, mm -hmm. and that was really my first. Uh, go at being a businessman around 18 or 19 years old. How did that idea come about? It came about by working at Red Lobster as a waiter, and mm. I, I was buying all these clothes like we do, mm -hmm. right? And I started to hear all the designers say, we don't like African Americans, we don't mm -hmm. like Tell inner me, city kids, we don't like rappers, and I was like, well, I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so why don't I make it for my own people and my the people who love hip hop? And I decided to make it, and 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 time after time yes. after time, trying and failing and failing and failing. Nine years later, I had a company. Well, now I know that uh, I don't know if it's Fubu or Puma. I think it's Puma that has a 50 year anniversary, and I know that Puma has kind of merged with Fubu. What was the intention behind that, or the marketing intention behind well, that? Well, we did a collaboration, and honestly, you know, when uh, I love hip hop so much, I was a kid when I was nine, ten years old, and I couldn't go outside. I used mm. to take my Pumas, and I used to dye them every weekend a different color, the same pair of shoes, because mm. I wanted all the girls to think. You had a couple of new pairs of shoes. I had a new pair of shoes, <laughs> the same raggedy Pumas, same raggedy Pumas, right. you know, over over ten weeks, mm. you know. But um, and now we have a collaboration here. I'm wearing yes, a pair I right have a now. Pair too. All right, I'm yes. mine. Yes. Would, thank they you. So we have a collaboration. So that's what that's we do around the world now with um with uh, FUBU, we do collaborations, uh, like with uh, a lot of different companies. Mm -hmm. How did you, Damon, get into Shark Tank? I mean, I enjoy watching it uh, week yeah. in and week out, yeah. and I, I love the personalities there. You and Mark Cuban, I must say, are one of my favorites. Yeah, we fight a lot, but yeah, we have a good time. I don't never, he don't never want to like nobody business. And, and he, Tell but, him to but, get some business. <laughs> no, but no, but he invests in all of them, he just thinks he knows everything. But he I invests in all of them. You know, he's the, he's the number one investor on the show really? in regards to all the businesses. Like, I have, he acts like he's not. No, he always says you're a entrepreneur, entrepreneur, but he gives everybody the money. <laughs> so I, you know, when we're on break, I pitch him my businesses. You know, come he's through. a billionaire. Yeah. Real smart. I'm Real trying smart to come man up. you are. You know? I'm trying to come up. You're okay. already up, brother. <laughs> if you didn't know, you're already up. I know, but that's right. When you're making your decisions on what to invest in, I mean, you see a lot of um, new businesses, yeah. startups and everything, and sometimes they're really kooky and sometimes they're like dead on. Right. What do you take in consideration with making sure you're making the right investment? Mm -hmm. Number one, is there a growth in the market? If they're topped out and they have one specific item for a very specific market, um, I, I don't have to invest in it. Also, um, do I like the person? 
Ah, bottom that's line. important. But how bottom do you line. know, Damon, that you I, like I, them? I got to relate to the person right there because, you know, if I want to just invest with geniuses in great companies, I just send my money over to Apple and Tesla and no, they don't bother right. me, right? But can I stand you? personally. Mm -hmm. And so whether people are watching it now, whether you're looking for an investment or you're looking to get a job, mm -hmm. after you pass the resume, can I sit next to you for eight hours a day, That's five true. days a week for the next 10 years? That's real tough. How long do you sit with them to determine that? Because what we see as viewers You see eight minutes, like, right? But of course, yeah. you know, TV, it, those pictures could be an hour, hour and a half, two hours. And then after that, it could take us nine months to close the deals. If when I'm calling you and, you know, I don't like you on the phone. My God. I'm not going to close the deal with you. I don't you know? blame you. Or I may ask you a question. Why don't you tell me that you owe the IRS a million dollars? And they would say... Why didn't you ask? Damon, are you getting a private investigator on the people? <laughs> no, that's called due diligence on the business. That, that's called due diligence. Like, hey, hey, you know, what's up? I got a good one myself, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be back. We'll be back with more Secrets to Success with Shark Tank's Damon John. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Yes. <laughs> We are back with author Damon John of the book Rise and Grind. Oh, yeah. Also Shark Tank. Oh, yeah. I know him from and many <laughs> other ventures. Um, Damon, I have to ask, because I watch Shark Tank all the time. Sure. Do you all care that sometimes... <laughs> <laughs> sometimes what? You might crush folks' dreams. No, and no, do no. you talk about this in your book? No, we no. love crushing dreams. We love Damon, it. Damon, yeah. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because the people that are going to make it, they're going to make it with or without us regardless, That's right? That's true. And That's the true. other people out there who are taking advantage of their friends and family's money and, and, and leveraging grandma's right. 401k because Ooh, they just awesome. want to be famous instead of really selling products, we want to crush their dream because we don't want them to hurt their kids and their family. So stop trying to be famous because that's not what you really want to do with sell cupcakes. You want to be famous. So, you know, we just give them... Some love, some love, you now, know? We know a lot of people that's trying to sell cupcakes, too. Mm -hmm. well, now, Damon, in a lot I, of different instances. I, I didn't know you were going to come down to Sister Circle and read the people. No, I'm not. You just put the people right in their place. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. When you see Shark Tank, you don't, you don't see the people that leave after we give them the money, and they spend all the money on their car that's and their ridiculous. bills. And we don't, we don't ever make a dime off of that. But they never I tell know. you, I'm going to take this and be irresponsible with it. They but, never tell you that on the show. But I know, and I'm sure someone has thought of this brilliant idea that I'm about to present that's to you. That's right, that's Let's right. Let's go ahead and put that in the contract, that if they do that they have to pay the money back twice they, over. They, they find other ways for Nagel. They, they don't have bad intent, though. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes they're just a little bit irresponsible with the cash. Rise and, and grind, I've been though. there. Let's talk about Rise and Grind. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Is all of this in the book? Yes. So it's all in the book. You have your new book, Rise and Grind, mm -hmm. and you said, listen, we all get the same 24 hours. What you do with it is, is your business. It's it, Listen, in the book, I you know I, I realized I was 48 years old. I had 60 companies, a brand new baby girl, and I, and I said to a lot of my friends who you see in the book, Catherine Zeta-Jones and Santana, also a young man named Kyle Maynard who climbed Mount Kilimanjaro with no arms and no legs. Mm. And I said, give me some tips on what you do to be more proficient during the day. What's the first 90 minutes? What's the last 90 minutes look like? And they all sit around the same 12 or 15 things, but all in different ways. Mm. Most of them will not look at any emails for the first hour when they wake up in the morning because mm -hmm. you're taking care of everybody else's problems right. if you look at all emails, right. right? They also won't look at social media for the first hour because everybody on social media is sexier, prettier, skinnier, wealthier, and they're all just as screwed up. But if you wake up in the morning taking in everybody else's problems and getting social media depression thinking about everybody else is doing better than you then you already started off your day on wow. a whole different level, right? And how important is social media? I know there's a, there's a, I, I have a lot of friends that are like, that's too much posting on social media, that's too much marketing. But I feel like not everybody sees your post all the time. So how much is too much posting and are people too, not posting enough? Too much post, so, so listen, social media, either. you have to think about it like this. Are you going to stand on a corner with a bullhorn and what are you going to project? If you're posting mm -hmm. too much of the wrong thing on there. So when I go to look to hire somebody, I look on their social media and I look at this. Who are their friends? Who are they doing? Mm. When are they posting? Is this from 9 to 5 when they were supposed to be working? Is mm. their friend a racist? Maybe wow. they're a racist. Uh, so we're looking at you. So if it's not in your advantage, stop doing it. Oh, right? my goodness. So really much. quickly before we get out of here, what is your your routine, your morning routine my as routine a billionaire? My routine is I wake up every... Man. Well, first of all, before I go to bed and when I wake up, I read the same 10 goals. Six of them expire in six months. 
The other four expire in three years, five years, 10 years, and 20 years. Wow. And I read them over before I go to bed and when I wake up in the morning. It's the last thing I think about before I go to bed. It's the first action I take when I wake up in the morning. Message. <laughs> and on this good note, thank you, Damon, so much for being with us. I wish we thank could just you. pick your brain all yes. day because there's so much in it. If, to get a copy of Damon's new book, Rise and Grind, you can get it online at Amazon.com and bookstores everywhere. And the conversation always continues on SisterCircleTV.com. Oh.